Hi everyone, my name is Majid Len. Uh, you heard from me before. I'm normally the technical advisor here, but today I'm here in my role as uh, a member of Stiftung Asienhaus. We are co-organizers of this lecture series, along with the Department for uh, Southeast Asian Studies of the University of Bonn, the Fridays for Future Hochschulgruppe Bonn, Fridays for Future Cologne, Philippine Bureau, uh, uh, we are very happy to bring you this lecture series, which has um, tackled many topics until today and has been very nice in also tackling these topics in a, um, from different sides, so to speak, so that we could uh, explore these issues through multiple lenses, be it from the, the scientific lens or from the activist lens, from a European perspective or from a regional or local perspective. And I'm very happy that we managed to bring all these people together here and that we managed to uh, lead to this exchange of ideas. And I hope that we can continue that. And I'm very excited for today as well, because we'll be hearing about another topic that we hadn't really tackled before. And we have a very good expert on. And next week, we'll also have a very good topic. So please all come back and uh, yeah, check us all out. Thank you. And with that, I'll hand over to Jutta, I believe. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to, a, to our today's lecture um, on climate and cement, the struggle of the salmon in the Kedeng Mountains in Indonesia. Um, I have the pleasure to introduce Marianne Klute, and I want to give you some interesting points in her life to make you understand the path she took till today. Marianne grew up in a small town with her father as her teacher at school, which influenced her career choice. Her father was a scientist, and so she decided to study first pharmacy and then chemistry. Already in her youth, she came into contact with physicians who went to Indonesia after the Dutch area to work there for a while. This has um, awakened her curiosity, and after having finished her studies, she went to Indonesia with her husband, where she lived for about 15 years. She came back to Germany during the Asian crisis at the end of the dictatorship in Indonesia. And here she very soon became an expert for environmental topics because of her scientific background and her language knowledge. Until 2012, she worked as a consultant for environmental issues with, uh, at Watch Indonesia, which is a German association working closely which, uh, with Indonesian and East Timorese democracy human rights and environmental groups. Today, she's an honorary expert for Indonesia at Denkhaus Bremen, an association that works on environmental issues as well. Since 2014, she works for the associ association Rette den Regenwald, literally to translate with Save the Rainforest. Here, she is the co-chairperson responsible for the Indonesian program. Rette den Regenwald is committed to the rainforest, its indigenous inhabitants, and the preservation of their habitats, a goal with it, which is also financially a support. Accordingly, Marianne's focus is on various environmental issues, especially related to Indonesia, such as forest, palm oil, climate, land rights, indigenous rights, mining, climate, cement, and others. With regard to our today's topic of Heidelberg cement and the resistance of the Samin against the cement industry in the Kedeng Mountains, Marianne launched a petition and she wrote an article with Annette Keller for the Le Monde Diplomatique, which was published last year. And now that we have heard about so many interesting stages in your life, we are looking forward to share your expertise. Hallo und Slamat datang, Marianne. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to share my picture. It is working. Do you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
I start with a picture of the of a community of the Samin in front of the German embassy, which immediately gives us an impression how the Samin are connected to us. This makes the topic the climate and cement, the struggle of the Samin in the Kendang Mountains in Indonesia are very interesting for us because we are in a multi-dimensional connected to this. I want to talk a little bit about the Kending Cast Mountains. Of course, about the Samin, a community which protects the Kending Cast Mountains and which is most important for these climate lectures uh, about what is cement for what is used for concrete infrastructure and growth and here i want to make the connection to our industry to our economic um, ideology and then the next is how cement is threatening ecology biodiversity the people, lifestyle, and life as a whole. And then what is the connection between the production of cement and climate issues? Maybe my presentation is not scientific. Uh, I will more likely tell you something about my experiences with this case and Let's start. First of all, I want you to present the island of Java. You will see the brown hills here are the very high volcanoes, mountains with height over 300 meters. And in the north, do you see my cursor? Can you see it in the north? part of middle and eastern Java, there are smaller mountains. And these are the Kending Cast Mountains. So the mm, beautiful pictures you know of Java, Javanese volcanoes or other Indonesian volcanoes, you cannot find here in this area. It looks quite different. What is a cast? I present you a picture of a cast which is not in Indonesia, but gives you an impression, impression of what a cast can look like. We also have cast mountains in Germany, all over the world, there are cast mountains. These mountains are mainly consist of limestone. And in beneath the cast mountains, you see they are not so high. This picture is, of course, not presenting the Kendang mountains, but you have an impression that it is not highly mountainous. There are living farmers, including the before mentioned Samin. There are farmers, and the Samin especially uh, are farmers who don't use fertilizers, who, they don't use herbicides or insecticides. So they are kind of a very early ecological uh, peoples and they are subsistence farmers living alone from the products of their fields. And here we have a um, picture about the impression what gives us the, the combination of the cast mountains in the picture at the left, you see them in the back, not so high, not so impressive. And then the fields where the farmers live, uh, a typical farming woman, her name is Paini with rice and uh, the typical close and then at, at the left and then we look a little bit deeper in the formation of the, uh, the limestone 
the cast is a mountain of limestone, which is influenced by the carbon dioxide of the air and uh, of water, of rain. And it is always transforming into something different. It is changing the whole time. Um, the water forms caves and dorms or towers inside these mountain areas. And then we that's what's too, too early. And uh, then we will uh, have a lot of water sources in these limestone mountains. This is very important for the whole of Java, not only for the surrounding areas, because most of the water sources of Middle and East Java uh, come from these areas. The Samin say that the water and the mountains, the Kandeng Mountains, gives them life. And they, they, they call the mountains uh, the mother, the mother earth. So not, this, not only the Samins are interested in <laughs> the Kendeng Mountains, but also the uh, cement industry. Here is only a list of some of the largest cement companies all over the world. And you will see uh, that the Heidelberg cement, we are, which we will talk about from Germany, is li like the third biggest cement company. So, what, uh, yes. what is the pro cement production like? First of all, the cement industry is interested in the limestone of the mountains, and then they have to explore and destruct the mountains to gain the, the limestone. And the cement is um, not only made from limestone, but also from clay and sand. And depending on what, what kind of, of uh, cement is produced, there are also other additives. Cement is used, as nearly everybody of you know, to produce, to man manufacture concrete. And concrete is what we have around us. What we, well, we, we live like here in, in Germany or in all cities of the world in a concrete world. What is done with the limestone, the clay, the sand and the other additives? It is then um, processed by sintering at very high temperatures. The, the, pro, the chemical formula is presented like here, like cal calcium carbonate, and with heat becomes calcium oxide and CO2. So by destroying the mountains, of course, CO2 is emitted. And because the living structure, the living system of a limestone or cast mountain, the cast is also able to, to, um, to cover or to, to, to absorb CO2. So it is not only during the sintering process that the CO2 is released, but also by destruction, by losing the mountains, the ability to absorb CO2 is lost. What we have in the end of the exploration of a limestone mountain or cast mountain, in this case, the Kandang mountain, we lose the landscape. The landscape is destroyed with all its abilities. We also have a very high greenhouse gas emissions. So, if you see from the formula, one molecule carb calcium carbonate gives us one molecule 
uh, carbon di di dioxide. And this process needs very high energy. This is also a big problem. Here we have a look like a, a limestone mountain, which is already destroyed or it is uh, transformed to, to in, in a mining area. Uh, this photo is from Germany, but this is what like the uh, Kendeng mountain mountains would look like after the plans for four more cement factories, including mining sites would be realized. Until now, we have in the Kandung Mountains plans for four new factories or fa factories from four companies. One of these companies is Heidelberg Cement, which I will introduce a little bit later. And um, one of those factories already is, in, is constructed and they're already working. And Heidelberg cement is not yet working. And this is why we are also interested in campaigning against these plants. I talked about the production of cement a little bit before. Um, and I want to make now the um, relation to the climate. Cement has very high CO2 emissions emissions. As I told you before, one molecule carbon dioxide gives us one molecule, one molecule uh, calcium, uh, calcium carbonate gives us one molecule carbon dioxide. So it is not exact, but nearly one ton cement releases also one ton carbon dioxide. The CO2 emissions are emitted during the query process and the manufacturing process. This is not this is not the only thing, but we also have CO2 emissions during the power uh, during the power consumption. CO2 is need uh, is is emitted because the process needs a lot of energy, energy for electricity during this process and for the heat. If we look at the numbers from statistics on data, we will find that the global cement production emissions are higher than the total EU emissions. So this makes cement a factor which has to be considered during the climate discussions. It is not only the forest fires or, or transport sector, but also from the production sector, it is the cement production, uh, a very important, if we discuss how to remove him, reduce the climate warming. Um, we, we'll find, we have, we find different data of the global greenhouse gas emissions, depending on studies, depending on the countries, but there are about 8% of the global greenhouse gas emissions in total. And this is more than from the global air traffic before COVID. Some uh, data give us numbers like four times more than the global air traffic emissions. And that is not all because during uh, or around the factories, around the plants, around the quarry areas, there is a lot of dust. Uh, also the emissions of sulfuric and nitrogenous gases, which are toxic. Indonesia is a little bit different than in Europe because it is not an industrialized country and most of the emissions are coming from peat fires, forest fires and deforestation. 
the sector, industrial sector is small. It is only this uh, red line. So the, the first one, the orange one is the energy sector and just above the energy sector is a small line, which is the red line, which means the industrial sector. And a cement production emits about 48% or nearly half of Indonesian industrial emissions. So the, more, the biggest problem, of course, for us are, is the deforestation and the forest and peat fires. But with in increasing industrialization and growth in the cement industry, this, um, this part will be more important in the future and has become also important during the last 10 years. Uh, if you have a look at the, at the global cement production, I only give a, an example of Germany. Um, we had 35 million tons per year in 2017. And the increase is compared compared to the year before rather small. We can say that the cement production in Germany or other industrial countries is, is not so much growing. It is like stable. What we, what we um, observe is that production uh, sites move to other countries. This explains that production is nearly the same level as the year before. The growth is only is, is rather small, and uh, but in other parts of the world it is it is um, growing. Uh, this is a part of uh, one of the plants of uh, Heidelberg cement in in Germany. And we will talk a little bit about the energy which is needed for the production of cement. The energy costs are very, very high. And this is true for all countries and for all kinds of cement productions. In Germany, it is like, according to the data of, of the of the Association of Cement Producers in Germany, about half of the total production cost is for energy. And of course, as I, as I said before, energy also releases uh, carbon dioxide and is very, which is very important for, for the climate debate. The, in the industry here in Germany and in other industrial countries and also starting in Indonesia um, begins to use not to, to use waste and biomass for energy and less coal and and um, gas which they yeah which they claim would be um, good for the climate, but actually biomass for energy and even waste for us in a climate discussion does not, not, that does not make a lot of sense. Because of the high costs of, en of, of energy for heat and electricity, the cement, the cement industry in Germany, for example, uh, enjoys um, a lot of, yeah, facilities or uh, protection. There is a carbon leach protection until 2030, which means 10 more years. And there has also, enjoys also certificates, carbon certificates, part of them free of charge or very cheap. Let us uh, have a look at the global cement production. Compared to like 30 years ago, the increase in cement production is four times like 1 billion in 88, 1980, 80, 1 billion ton per year in 8080. And 30 years later, 4.1 billion tons 
per year globally. If you compare this amount to the amount of plastic production, which is also an environmental issue and and, and very urgent issue, that uh, about double the amount, like 8 billion tons plastic has been produced during the last 60 years. So we can say the increase in cement production in the last 30 years is half of the amount of the pl plastic production in the last 60 years, which means for us who lived 30 years ago, or some of us maybe even 60 years ago, we live now in a world covered with plastic and covered with concrete and cement. So the growth of the uh, global cement production is um, of course important also for the Par Paris climate agreement. If we want to really be able to reduce the emissions by 16% to, to limit the global warming to two degrees, we cannot ignore the emissions from the cement industry. We cannot ignore that the um, cement industry in, in industrial countries is looking for ways to reduce costs and also emissions. They developed energy efficient ovens, they had developed new production processes, but these cannot compensate. This could maybe reduce the emissions if the production globally would be on the same level, but compared to the growth, it is like inefficient. Now we will have a look at the cement production in Indonesia. As you can imagine, most of these growth in cement production, global cement production growth is now in, in Asia. And Indonesia is also very important for this. Um, you can imagine that the, the most does that groom the highest growth is in China, where uh, a lot, nearly half of the cement products are used or consumed. But Indonesia has also experienced like fifth, more than 50% growth of cement products in the last 10 years. And it is not only to fulfill demand of industrial countries in in. in uh, and uh, China, but also for the domestic demand. And this is because of the politics which um, yeah, emphasize economic growth and economic growth means new harbors, new airports, streets, buildings, uh, especially in Eastern Indonesia. And, and there is, um, this is a priority of the economic plans of the economic roadmaps to develop, to build the eastern part of Indonesia, uh, to build up the infrastructure. And for us as environmentalists, it is also a sign, a bad sign that these new harbors, airports, streets make it easier or open the door for more environmental destruction. So Indonesia itself has really big cement companies. The biggest one is the Indonesian Zeman Indonesia, which has nearly half of the market share. But the second one, which is interesting for us and for our case with the Kandang Mountains and with the Samin is Indo Cement, which is owned by Heidelberg Cement and Indo Cement has nearly one third of the market share. And Holcim Indonesia is also a global acting cement company and there are many, many other smaller ones. But Heidelberg Cement is a big player in Indonesia. 
Here we have a look at the Kendang Mountains again. You remember the first picture with the people working in the fields. And uh, I told you that there are four cement factories, plant and cement um, limestone explorations plant in, in these Kendang Mountains and one already is realized. And uh, this is this one in Rambang. This is what is left of the limestone mountains, which means water and life for the people living in this area. What is Heidelberg cement doing there? Heidelberg owns a daughter, which is called, which is called Birschwood Amnia Limited. And this daughter holds more than half, like 51% of Indocement Tungal Prakarsa, which we call here uh, shortly Indocement. And this is this makes Heidelberg Cement, the German company, a leading cement and concrete producer in Indonesia. Uh, Heidelberg has already three cement plants with a production of more than 20 million tons per year eight cement terminals and 45 other plants producing concrete or other things which is needed for the production of concrete. The goal is to become in uh, the goal is that Indocement as the yeah the name of Heidelberg cement in Indonesia will become a leading global cement and concrete producer, not only in Indonesia, but in the whole of Asia and maybe in the world. So this destruction of the Kandang Karst Mountains is very much related to money, to money flow. And here's only a, a little list or, or the beginning of a list which international financial institutions are investing in the destruction of this mountains area. How is Heilberg Cement working in Indocement? In Pati, which is the district where the factory is going to be built. Uh, there is another daughter, Sahabat Mulia Sakti, who will be the producer. And they need more than 2,000 hectares of the condemned cast for the mining the limestone. This is not, not, not the only area they need. They only need fields for the extraction of clay. And the plant needs also 180 hectares of fertile fields. And these fertile fields and, uh, and on our fields are uh, the fields where the salmon are producing the rice and the vegetables and where they live. Now we want to introduce a little bit more the, uh, the salmon. They call themselves Sedulur uh, Sikap, which means the friendly minded. They <clears throat> like migrated to this area during the uh, in the end of the 19th century, when they were in opposition to the Dutch colonial uh, uh, government, uh, they didn't want to be used as yeah, uh, citizens, they didn't want to pay taxes, they, they didn't want to bring their children to the school and so on. And they, they started to develop uh, a life in harmony with nature. They consider their, the, the earth and the mountains as their mother, the mother who gives them all what they need for the life. When in 2005 or six, the plans for the development of four cement plants, um, but, yeah, were becoming known to them, they started the protests against the destruction of the Kandang Mountains. So since 15 years or more than 15 years now, the Samin are, are really in a resistance against 
the land grabbing, the loss of their livelihood, of their, of their kind of living and against the ecological disaster which is coming to them. They developed also um, a resistance which is very colorful. Um, they had long protest mass, many, many long protest mass marches to the court buildings, to the district um, capitals, and also to Jakarta. They did lobbying and uh, litigation and also networking all over Indonesia and also internationally. So in the case related to the case of Heidelberg cement and the proposed plant of Heidelberg cement in party in the Kandang mountains, they walked to the German embassy, they delivered a speech also to Heidelberg cement at the annual, at the annual meeting two times and they're building international uh, support, which uh, community which is co which calls uh, itself now here the safe condemn. These people are dressed in traditional clothes. They wear hats like they were uh, uh, on their fields when they work, and most of them or leading figures of them are women, and because they say they, have, they feel the relationship to the earth and their mother. And so they are prominent figures. And this uh, photo is from Jakarta, but they, I will show you only some photos. We have so many, uh, but it's, uh, yeah, maybe it's, it's not the time to, to do this. This picture is also the uh, Samin women in front of the German embassy, which is on the left at Bundaran Ha'i, presenting the fru fruits of the fields in traditional clothes, singing songs of love for Mother Earth, which protects them and uh, which these women want to protect. And there is also a film about this movement. Um, the Heidelberg cement plan is not included, but uh, the resistance movement is very much the, the issue of the film. The film is called Samin versus Semen, made by Dendi Laksono, which is one of uh, all the, the most famous Indonesian documentary filmer. And the group uh, calls themselves the, the like the GMPKK, which is the people who care for the Kandang Mountains. Yeah, here's the full name, Jaringan Masharakat Peduli Pegunungan Kendang. So uh, other forms of protest with young people, with students, and in front of the building or, or of the building where the annual meeting of Heidel, uh, Heidelberg Cement took place some years ago where one of the women, Gunati, delivered a, a speech and asked for the cancellation of the, of the plan to construct the next cement factory. Also, there are many publications in Bahasa, Indonesia, but also letters from us or uh, articles in German, in, in German um, journals or newspapers about this case. So it is, uh, I think, um, community, environmental community already knows about this case. And in front of, of uh, in Germany produced transparent, which is now in Jakarta is also um, a, a woman which is I, I think many of you know already, she studied in Germany and also was very active in this protest. I, I told you about the colorful protests. One of, of the th um, things what the women in Jakarta did, they 
put their feet into cement or in, into concrete and protested in front of, of, the, uh, of the presidential palace for hours and, so, and this very much often. And this was also repeated in Germany uh, several times in front of the Heidelberg cement meeting or building. And the last one is um, a new coalition called the Cement Endbündnis, Cement Bündnis, uh, which is a very recent development that also Fridays for Future and, and um, other activists now realize that cement is really a climate issue and that the case of the Samin in the Kendeng Mountains is a case where we can learn from and which we, which, uh, we so should support. But I think also that the Samin are fighting for us and are protecting for us. So working with, on this case for several years, uh, it is my summary that the business as usual and the production of cement, increasing growth of cement production and generally the economic growth mirror in the growth of the cement industry. So if we, if we have a, want to know uh, how the economic development or economic growth is going on, we maybe the growth of the cement industry gives us an impression about this. Cement industry is moving or has already moved partly to other countries from industrial countries to southern countries. And a very important summary is that the climate goals cannot be achieved with technical solutions alone, with other materials, with less or alternative energy and resources. And cement production is destroying valuable ecosystems and life models. So nature and people, biodiversity and indigenous people, small farmers, alternative livelihoods. Thank you very much. This is one protest in Berlin. I think this was all. I try to make it short and not to. No, Maria, it was, it was quite interesting. Thank you very much, Trema um, Kasi, for the moment. <laughs> yeah, you see the, the applause. And um, you know our format, um, now we open the discussion. Um, those of you who don't want to be recorded, please type your message in the chat. Those who want to speak, you can also type your name in the chat or you can lift your hand. And if you raise your hand, please do it in, the, in a way that I can see you. So let's start. Who would like to have the first question? Um, yeah. I see Maxi. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. First of all, thanks for your presentation. It was uh, very interesting. Um, yeah. And uh, we, we've learned about the G. I R A M movement in Indonesia. Um, and I was wondering if this movement is connected with the several other movements you've mentioned in your presentation. What is the G I? I don't know. G R M I. Mm, it's called G E R A M movement. And uh, this movement was found uh, in the early 2000s years. So this is a movement uh, with, uh, with young people from everywhere, different uh, heritages and stuff. Um, and these people fighting against several problems in Indonesia, like um, forest fires, um, big companies. Um, well, wait, I probably got an example. Pro um, companies like, yeah, large cement factories or... Um, uh, yeah, like large semen companies. <laughs> oh, actually, I don't know. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I cannot uh, answer the, your question. Okay, <laughs> but no problem anyway. <laughs> Thank you. So, any further question then? Who would like to? <laughs> Okay, now that I see that there is no other question for the moment, um, Marianne, let me ask you one. Um, yeah. You talked about um, this problem and that people are going to demonstrate also in front of Heidelberg cement. Um, what is your feeling? Do the, does the German public um, realize the problem? Or is it more uh, that we're always talking about um, CO2 emissions uh, in relation to um, oil? I think the the public in Germany and even in Indonesia is not talking about the the emissions from the uh, cement industry. No, so we don't talk about this. We we talk about a lot about uh, heat and I think uh, transportation and maybe coal plants, but not about the cement. Yeah. Yeah. So I the problem is, um, the, the problem is, I think that if you want to reduce emissions uh, with the production being like stable, not growing, but stable, you can, uh, depending with what industry you are, you can maybe um, change the the production line, you can change the resources, you can change something. But the cement industry is very difficult. What can you change? You have limestone as the basic element, the basic ingredient or the basic resources. And if you, uh, if you heat up the limestone, if you synthesize the limestone, of course, one molecule is of, of CO2 is emitted Mm. So this process, so if you want to, to really change um, the, the cement industry or want to reduce the cement industry, you should use other materials, not limestone, but there is no. Yeah, Maybe okay. there is, but only for a very small sector. Mm. For, for this huge amount of buildings and streets and, and harbors and airports and we are like, we, what, what I read last week is now we have more, uh, um, the, the amount of concrete and plastic, which is covering the surface of our, of our air, earth is now larger than the amount of bio, biomass, which mm. is very much disturbing. And as I showed you before, if you compare the, the amount of plastic produced since 16, 60 years, which is like double the amount of concrete produced in the last 30 years, um, this, is a, this is a very important factor for, um, for, for not only for the climate, but also for, for the surface of our earth, for biodiversity and, and so on. Yeah, okay. Now there appeared uh, two other questions or one, one, one statement and also Klaus Schilder has lived, um, raised his hand. So let me start with, um, in, the, in the chat there is this uh, G-E-R-I-M, this is Ache Citizens Lawsuit Movement. Does that say something to you? Ache Citizens uh, Lawsuit Movement. Ache, yeah, yes. Yeah, because that, I, I think that was uh, linked to Maxi's question and um, so it does not say anything uh, in special to you. Uh, yes, um, we work together, but not, not related to cement, but related, oh. related to, um, uh, to, to, the, to a, a new plan, plan regulation in Arche. They had all, uh, they, yeah, so like two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. so there yes. has been a new, yeah, 
Mm. Uh, a new Tata Ruang, a new, um, how do you call it in German, in, in, in English? Space planning, um, space plan, uh, yeah, for, for Archie, which, which uh, indicates or which, which says where is, uh, which area is for industrial zone, which area is a, a forest area, which area is a residential area, and so mm. on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. Then Eva from Indonesia, she would like to know, she wrote a, a question into the chat um, because she cannot turn her, on her camera and she asks, what is the response of German government and cement corporates of this resistance, I think, with regard to this army? Um, the German government promised to have a look in the case. So this is what I know. Yeah, okay. They did, maybe they did, but I do not know what they found. And uh, of course, I have been once, um, I met also together with Gunati, I, I met the COO of um, Heidelberg Cement and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I would like to ask Klaus uh, to unmute and um, Ask this question or do the statement, please. Yes. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, good evening. Thanks for for the uh, interesting um, our, um, uh, presentation. Um, well, on I, I wanted to ask on on the uh, responsibility of uh, the company, but also on the German government. Um, as you may know. Uh, on uh, 9th of September last year, um, Fian, uh, uh, together with um, uh, Development International, Inclusive Development International, uh, filed an OECD complaint with the German uh, Ministry for Economics. Um, this is a standard procedure under the OECD guidelines for multinational corporations. And, well, basically, what the, the co complainants are are calling for is uh, for Heidelberg Cement to fulfill, to live up to their human rights due diligence, human rights and environmental due diligence properly. So the OECD consultation procedure is on its way. I don't know details as we are supporting that, but we are not part of, of the complaint procedure and it's a silent complaint procedure. Um, but uh, uh, eventually, it will lead to, to some sort of agreement between the uh, parties that is uh, uh, negotiated by the German government. So um, it's, it's not a, a lawsuit against the company, but it may change the situation. Uh, it may not, uh, actually. So I was uh, wondering, as uh, Marianne, you mentioned, the the discussions with the management of Heidelberg Cement. Um, well, one other thing also we are discussing in Germany about uh, a binding legislation on human rights due diligence for all German companies, both in Germany and abroad. Uh, this is in, in some sort of advanced uh, stages. Um, this would also apply to Heidelberg Cement and their, their affiliates, of course. Um, calling for proper due diligence with, with a number of, of things they, they would have to do. So do you think that the, the management is more open than it used to be a few years ago to this sort of dialogue, is more open to living up to what will become eventually binding for them anyway? Um, because my latest information is that they are still lagging behind on, on uh, you, their human rights uh, record. This, this is the concrete question. And, and there's one comment, as, as you mentioned, uh, the, the need to reduce the overall consumption of uh, cement and concrete. Um, I found it interesting that uh, the architects for future, for future, for instance, are actually calling for that, to replace uh, concrete by other more sustainable uh, uh, con construction materials. So I was wondering uh, what your thoughts are about combining the campaign against Heidelberg Cement with the uh, campaign on the need to reduce cement um, consumption and how 
do you think this could work out in Indonesia? Because I think in Germany, with Architecture for Futures and others, there, there are some concrete uh, partners for that. But do you think that this could also be a campaign that could would be feasible in Indonesia? Well, thank you. Yeah, first of all, we have also been um, part of this compliant, uh, compliance team. And until now, I did not receive any response. So I cannot I don't know what, what is going on and what will, will be going on. And um, the second is, of course, it makes sense to replace cement. So if we, we use the same amount like uh, 30 years ago, it makes sense to start there. But the growth, the, the growth of cement production Cannot, um, yeah, this, this cannot be balanced with new. Of course, we have to do it, if, uh, but it cannot be balanced. Like if we have 100% production now and we replace 1% with other materials, and next year we have um, 200, like compared to the year before, we have double and we replace uh, one percent again, then still we have a lot of a lot a huge growth. And this is a problem for me. So with the, the, the growth of the cement production in generally, I think we cannot uh, solve the problem by replacing cement in uh, partly. But why not work together with the architects for future, of course. In Indonesia, uh, there are some movements, as far as I know, architects who develop uh, living areas in, in, in poor kampungs or so on with, with bamboos or with, with local materials. But the problem is uh, not the architects. The, the problem is the, um, the, the plans for the yeah, for, for the development of, of big 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 infrastructure and this will not be replaced yeah I guess it will be a bit difficult I can imagine um, just to re replace it but before we um, discuss that further um, are there any further questions from from the audience? Um, Oliver, would you say something? Just to carry on that discussion, uh, I mean, so if I'm understanding Mariana correctly, then a if we stick to an economy which has to grow to survive, then uh, uh, we can't just have a technical solution to the cement and climate problem. So this means we need to move towards a kind of degrowth perspective, which is of course one significant uh, movement, especially in Europe, which is part of the climate justice movement, I would say. Um, I would totally agree with, with Mariana there, but um, still, even if we degrowth, then we also need to change the way we, it's not just how much, but also the way we produce. So I think it's still a, a valid question of what alternatives are there to cement in terms of building transportation systems, in terms of building um, you know, housing? Um, and I'm sure there are some interesting solutions. Um, any thoughts on that? Actually, what I can, can do only is like talk like a Cassandra. What, what, yeah. I have no solution, even with my uh, scientist, scientist background. The same problem is with sand. You also need for, for the concrete, to don't only need cement, but you also need sand and you need clay. Uh, we have a, a lot of problems with the exploration of sand at, at the coasts of Indonesia and, and other parts of the world. Main Indonesia mainly in Sulawesi. So uh, on smaller islands, there are 
like already 80 islands are lost, not only because of rising um, sea level, but also because they are destroyed um, for the exploitation of sand. So somehow has this, this development has to stop. I don't have the solution, but I see and that 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 this way of business, this way of living is leading really to, to a disaster. So what can we do? We, we can help the people on the ground like the Samin or other uh, groups in Indonesia working against the destruction of the rainforest, destruction of the, the coasts and so on and so on. And because these people, this is uh, what, what I, Belief and what 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 I learned during my my life, and these people protect the earth for us, so we protect them as far as we know. But uh, the solutions is this is not this is not my job, and I don't know how to do it. Actually, I don't know how to do it. We can, of course, uh, ask for technical solutions, but this will not. Uh, solve the problem. This will give us new, new ideas, but will not solve the problem. Is this what you wanted to hear? I don't know a solution. How can we replace concrete? No. Okay, any further questions from the audience? Ah, Klaus has another one, please. We don't hear you. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Klaus, unmute yourself, yeah. please. Uh, sorry, I uh, I would like to continue the the debate on on how to reduce our concrete consumption. But if there are any other questions, uh, um, please uh, go ahead. Or, yeah, there are no further questions. I have one, but I can and I can have it later. So perhaps you go on and um, you do it a bit in, in shorter time, please, because time is running for us. Okay, well, I, I'm just uh, because the um, campaign cement was uh, mentioned that I think they have uh, some good um, uh, um, uh, they have some good uh, proposals uh, on how to reduce overall con consumption of uh, uh, concrete where it's possible or to use uh, more eco-friendly concrete uh, where the CO2 content uh, is reduced, uh, not in the production, but I, I, I think uh, during the, the technical process. Um, this does not help out of the dilemma that more and more uh, concrete uh, constructions are done. And uh, this is why I ask about Indonesia, because we would need to have this discussion also in Indonesia. It would be quite interesting. And I would just remind you of the um, of, of uh, the, the, the study that the WBGU, the um, Wissenschaftlicher Beirat Globale Umweltfragen, I don't know how it translates into English, uh, so Scientific Council for the German government did on um, cities and urbanization. And they devoted some thinking to, to, to the problem. And I would just encourage you to, you know, to get into a dialogue because I think there's a lot we can do and we need to face this discussion in, in our societies and we cannot run away from it because concrete will be around for decades as a construction material. And it's just not realistic to, to get rid of it uh, right away, but we need to find ways out of the dilemma. Sorry. Maya, would you like to answer to that or? Yes, I know uh, now about uh, new materials and I know about research. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I would like to, to focus on, um, because I think we, sh we should have a look at this um, as well, is on the Tamin, um, because that is a group of people. And of course, anyhow, they need help because they have hardly um, a chance, let me say it like this, against uh, these big uh, companies, um, their, land, their, their environment is destroyed. But what could one do con in, in a concrete way? What, what would you su su suggest? One suggestion is of what, what they want is, of course, um, 
support like here, uh, like Klaus Schilder is doing with the government or we are writing complaint letters and so on. But they also um, need, of course, money to, to buy some more fields that they cannot be grabbed. This is one thing. Mm. Yeah, okay. Any further questions to that from the audience? Can you explain a bit, Marianne, how that works, uh, buying the land title and whether that's successful? Yeah, they already bought some hectares with the money they had, but they want to go further on. So you, you um, have to imagine this area around the Kendang Mountains. There are not only the Samin living, but also other families or other villages which don't consider themselves to be this indigenous community, but they work closely together and some of them have land titles and need money and so this land can be bought. Yeah. Anybody else would like to say something or ask something? Okay, then I would like to know, Oliver, okay, after me, yeah? I will, I will take it. Um, no, the question that I have in, 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 in addition to Klaus is, um, has there any, uh, been any, any actions to file lawsuits um, from the Samin against their own government? I yes. mean, what I understood is that it's the own government and the patronage um, which, which makes them, yeah, puts a lot of pressure on them. There have many court sessions or trials. Mm -hmm. And some, uh, yeah, in, in the county and some in the district and uh, on different levels and different, um, and different courts. And uh, the, the issue or the, the point which we're fighting was um, different also. One is because of something um, is going really wrong. Um, you have you you invest in in a project which is able to destroy the government or destroy livelihood. Of course, you have the environmental um, in the you have an, an, have an have an environmental assessment, and in Indonesia you also have to to uh, without uh, proper environmental assessment, you cannot get um, a license. So mm. the process of licensing the plant, of, of licensing the land, which is, um, <coughs> which is for the plant and then for the construction and then for, uh, the, for, for the production and so on. So you need a lot of different licenses and there is some, something going uh, wrong, or that the environmental assessment is missing, or the environmental uh, ass assessment is is good but is thrown away or missing. So the process is they the the um, processes they started is about these legal things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would like to give uh, due to time. I would like to give the last question to Oliver, and perhaps Marianne. After that, you will have a final statement for us. Oliver, it's yours. No, well, it's not a question. It's just in response to your question, Jutta. Um, okay. Because I think this this topic, and also thank you to Mariana for the for the very interesting talk. It it's very relevant to us from several perspectives. One is it's tackling one of the big kind of undiscussed issues of climate change, namely cement, and so it has a global kind of uh, significance in that sense. Um, two, it, um, it was related to a, a real and long-lasting social movement in, in Southeast Asia, which, uh, where solidarity, you know, is, uh, is, is called for. So I think for the Southeast Asian students among us, it's a very interesting, um, you know, uh, case study. But, and thirdly, there's a, the, the direct connection with, with Heidelberg Cement. So, uh, and Heidelberg Cement is, you know, is really in Heidelberg. So that's where their uh, headquarters are. And there's a campaign that people can get involved with. And you ask, what can people do in a concrete way? 
I think it's very easy to, to join this campaign and uh, Fridays for Future has already joined in Heidelberg. So it's, it's gathering momentum and actually arch architects for our future are also part of the campaign. So, so there's something com coming together now. Um, so I think it's interesting for, you know, students for, and, you know, for Southeast Asian studies, but it's also possible to get involved as, as a climate justice uh, activist. And one way to join it would be to join the uh, the AG Ressourcen of the ASEAN House, um, which is also now uh, going to become more active in this campaign. So this is not very far away in Cologne, um, and I sent the link in the chat if someone you know is interested in this topic specifically. Okay, Maria, then I would like to give the floor to you for a final statement if you like to. Yes, um, for me it is very much important the sentence um, why do you solve your problems in our country or in our fields so uh, this means if we need cement sand whatever timber whatever we look for well, this in other countries, but uh, at the cost of the life of other people, of the cost of biodiversity, of the cost in this case uh, of landscape, of water resources, I, and I think we do not have the right to do it. Okay, then I thank you very much, first of all, for your um, expertise, Marianne. It was a pleasure to have you here tonight. And I thank the audience for all the questions and the interesting input. And now I would like to hand, uh, like to hand over to Lara for, from Students for Future for a short introduction for the coming uh, week. Thank you. And thank you for the interesting lecture today. Next week, we will have the final session of this lecture series. And I would love to cordial cordially invite you all of you to join us because we will have a very special and exciting finale ahead of us. We will have a panel discussion with four amazing panelists from both Southeast Asia and Germany who are engaged in climate activism. Not only does their experience as climate activists cover two different continents and three different countries, but also do they represent the wide range of activities and forms of activism in the global climate justice movement. Yan Yan from Indonesia is working with WALHI, the largest and oldest environmental advocacy NGO in Indonesia, which is working on various topics such as natural resources, indige indigenous rights and deforestation. Minna from Germany is an activist with Ende Gelände. The movement is best known, I think, for blocking coal-fired power plants with their own bodies and uses civil disobedience to take a stand for climate justice. Lin from Thailand founded the climate strike in Thailand and is also an environmental storyteller. And Lin from Germany is a Fridays for Future activist here in Bonn. So both of them have organized strikes for climate justice. These four activists will be discussing, among other topics, their methods for activism, government responses to climate justice struggles, and will also answer all of your questions. So I'm very looking forward to this debate, and I hope to see everyone there. And until then, I hope you have a good evening and a good week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lara. Um, I see we will have a lot of questions <laughs> next week. And thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. So have a good night and welcome and see you next week. Bye.